Hello friends, welcome back to yet another Facebook live session brought to you by the team here at Baiju's. Now this is a part of the Baiju's revised series which is aimed at helping you prepare better for your board examinations. Now the board examinations are almost there. In less than two weeks you start your board examinations and in exactly one month from today you'll be writing the mathematics exam. I'm interested in the mathematics exam because today's session focuses on mathematics. Now you've had quite a few sessions before this. You had a couple of sessions in chemistry, couple of sessions in physics and one session in mathematics. So what did I look at in the previous math session? I looked at the first four chapters of mathematics. Now do you remember what I told you in the previous session? I told you that those four chapters are actually chapters from which a number of questions come and these questions are pretty easy to answer. Now that is not the case with the chapters that I will be looking at today. Today I look at chapters from calculus. Now as soon as I say calculus, many of my students tend to get scared. But my whole point of taking this session is to make sure that you're not scared about calculus because calculus questions too are questions that you can attempt and get marks from. So the chapters that I focus on today are continuity and differentiability, application of derivatives and integrals. The next two chapters of calculus which are application of integrals and differential equations will be taken in the next session which is on Saturday. So one thing that you have to keep in mind about today's session is at the end of the session I'll be answering questions and I will be answering questions only pertaining to these three chapters. If you ask questions from the further chapters, those questions will be answered in subsequent sessions. Also, if you have questions from the previous session, questions from chapters that were covered in the previous session, you can post them. I will answer those questions also towards the end of today's session. So let's get into calculus. Now, as I've already mentioned, calculus is something that scares a few students. But then you're not supposed to be scared because calculus is almost 30 marks. And if you do not understand integrals, then you cannot solve problems from the next two chapters as well. So effectively, you'll be completely ignoring calculus. Please don't do that because calculus too can be tackled in a nice way and you can at least get 10 out of the 30 marks for sure from calculus with a little bit of effort. It is still not too late to get those 10 marks worth of knowledge from calculus. So the first chapter, which is continuity and differentiability. But before this, let me again remind you the way in which the question paper of maths is structured. We have four sections. The one mark questions, there are four such questions. The two mark questions, there are eight such questions. 11 four mark questions. And in the end, there are six six mark questions. And calculus generally will fetch questions from almost all the sections. Generally, one mark questions are not that frequent from calculus, but you can sometimes expect one mark questions. And one mark questions are specifically for those students who are trying to score a hundred. To get hundred, these one mark questions are what will at the end of the day be the difference between 99 and 100. So to get these one mark questions right, you'll have to know each and every concept in great detail because a one mark question can be quite tricky sometimes and then you might lose your marks. But from calculus, especially from continuity and differentiability, you can expect two, four, two and four mark questions normally. So continuity and differentiability starts with the concept of continuity, which is an extension of limits, which we studied in 11th standard. Then we move on to differentiability, which we've already seen a little bit in 11th standard. And then we move on to methods of differentiation. Now methods of differentiation is the easiest bit of calculus. Differentiation, logarithmic, parametric. Now implicit and logarithmic differentiation might be a little tricky sometimes, but at least the initial part, which is the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, all these are very easy. And believe me, two mark questions come sometime directly based on chain rule of differentiation. Or a four mark question comes from parametric differentiation. Now parametric differentiation is really simple, isn't it? They say x is equal to 80 square, y is equal to 280. Find out what is d square y by dx square. Now this is very, very simple. How difficult is it to differentiate 80 square two times or 280 two times? Pretty simple, isn't it? So in order to get marks from differentiation, you have to pick topics from where you can easily score marks. 
and these topics are the first half of the chapter and then topics such as parametric differentiation and higher order differentiation. Now, in my opinion, the chapter on continuity and differentiability will definitely fetch you six to eight marks. And one question is definitely on finding out the points of discontinuity of a given function or to prove that at certain point the function is not differentiable. Now, if you do a lot of such problems, if you've practiced enough number of continuity and differentiability problem, this four mark question should be very easy to solve. So I'm going to tell that sure shot there's going to be one question on checking whether the function is continuous at a given point or if it is differentiable at a given point. So make sure that you go through this topic for sure. Then don't leave topics such as parametric differentiation or the basic concepts such as chain rule of differentiation, product rule, quotient rule, etc. For students who are aiming to score 100 marks, who don't want to miss any marks, you'll have to go through the chapter in great detail because certain intricate details such as in implicit differentiation or in logarithmic differentiation might be the difference between you scoring and find out the slope of the tangent and after that use concepts from coordinate geometry to get the equation of a tangent or a normal. That is doable. But if you've not understood differentiation, then understanding monotonicity, approximations or extreme arc becomes pretty difficult. So rate of change and tangent and normal. These two are very easy topics from uh, application of derivatives. Whereas concepts such as maxima and minima, increasing, decreasing function, all these are quite convoluted. So if you're trying to somehow pass in the examination, then I would request you not to go through these concepts now because this is like the you need to solve now. The NCRT textbook solves a lot of very nice problems. Go through all of them. Do not forget the miscellaneous exercise. Those students who are trying to score 100 marks, do all these problems and acquaint yourself very well with any type of problem that comes from AOD. If you want more material, you have to definitely download the app. If you've not done, done it already, subscribe to us and you can get a lot of varieties of questions from application of derivatives in Baiju's The Learning App. If you've not downloaded it yet, you can get it in one of, you can get it from the, uh, from the, in this particular video, we've put the uh, link to our app. You can download it from there and you can get the app there. So the most interesting bit of application of derivatives is the fact that some of the questions which come from application of derivatives are sure short questions such as maximize something or uh, finding the strict uh, finding functions which are strictly increasing or strictly decreasing which is from monotonicity so these are topics that you have to focus on definitely to get 100 marks in the examination for students who are trying to just pass in the examination do not forget concepts such as tangent and normal rate of change. Now, I'm not sure if every year a question will come from tangents and normals or rate of change, but if a question comes, make sure that you attempt this question and get the marks for this particular question because then you can easily score those marks which are required for passing in the examination. So two chapters are done and we finally move on to the third chapter, which is integration. Now, integration is quite a scary chapter when it when compared to differentiation. And this is because people have a mental block in their head. They feel integration, I cannot do it. In fact, some of the concepts in integration are a little difficult, but integration as such is not difficult. Those students who have not seen integration so far, well, this is not the time to start integration. But for all of those who know integration, you have to solve a lot of different varieties of problem because this chapter is quite massive. You have lots and lots of topics covered in this particular chapter as far as properties of definite integrals. So questions come in plenty from this chapter. Applic uh, from integration, you can expect at least 10 to 13 marks of question, uh, 13 marks worth of questions. And you need to have a lot of practice to get these questions right. Certain things such as integration by substitution will not come without practice. As soon as you see a problem, if you have to figure out how to solve this problem, you would have had to do a lot of practice because the right substitution will not come into your mind if you've not done enough practice. One six mark question is almost sure shot from this particular chapter on integration. And these six mark questions tend to be sometimes freebies and sometimes really difficult. If it's a question which is based on properties of definite integrals, 
I'm a little worried because these questions can tend to be quite tricky. If it's a question from basic integration, such as evaluating integral as a limit of a sum. Now, evaluating integral as a limit of a sum is a free six mark question. Of course, it's a little lengthy, but it's definitely something that everybody can do because the expression which you have to integrate and solve as a limit of a sum is a very small easy expression. You will have to integrate x square plus e, plus e power minus x as a limit of a sum and this is something that you can do very very easily. So make sure that you go through these concepts which are short short easy question concepts and if you are very if you're finding integration very difficult then you can skip the other concepts. So integration is very very important because one a lot of questions come from here Two, the next two chapters which follow, which will also fetch a lot of questions, area under a curve, which is application of integrals and differential equations, need you to have a sound understanding of integration. So integration, area of area under a curve, which is application of integration and difference, differential equation. These three chapters put together will bring about 25 marks. So I would suggest you to not forget integration completely because even if you write a few steps, remember we are writing the board exam here, we are not doing competitive exams. So if you write steps, you get marks. Now this is something that a lot of students who sit with the mentality of a competitive exam sometimes forget because they feel that okay, I need to somehow find the answer the end answer is what that what matters for example if you solve a limit problem using the L'Hopital's theorem or the so-called L hospital's theorem the examiner is not going to give you a mark this is something that you use in the competitive exam but not in the board exam because in board exam teachers give mark to prescribed steps so these are very very important so make sure that you write down the answer in a very systematic way without skipping any of the steps because steps carry marks so these are the insights that I want to give you from these three chapters. I think we are running out of time. So it's time for me to take a few questions and in the questions I'll try and answer points that I've forgotten from these three chapters. Okay, <clears throat> Muhammad Faisal Dar here asks me what are the important topics in calculus? Well, I have covered three chapters of calculus in this particular video here and those three chapters are continuity and differentiability. Uh, application of derivatives and integration. Now the most important topics from these chapters which will fetch short short questions are the first is finding the points of discontinuity or finding the point when a function is differentiable or not differentiable. One four mark question can definitely be expected from this particular section on continuity and differentiability. Another topic from where short short question will come is properties of definite integrals. Now properties of definite integrals are a little tricky but a question always 100% comes from this particular section on properties of definite integrals. Another short short question is from monotonicity increasing decreasing function or extrema. Now one of these topics will definitely fetch a question from the chapter on application of derivatives. It's also important for you to remember a few concepts even though they do not directly fetch questions such as the chain rule of differentiation or using certain properties of definite integrals and also integration by parts because these are concepts which by themselves do not fetch questions but sometimes you will need to use these things. Integration by substitution. I don't think you can solve most of the problems which come in the examination without using integration by substitution. So these are some of the concepts that you have to remember in the in the, cha the three chapters that I've discussed from calculus today. Now, <laughs> this is a very interesting question. I have a question from Olivia Bakchi who asks me, Sir, will it be possible to score full marks in mathematics? Come on, Olivia. The whole hype about mathematics is because mathematics is one of those subjects where you can score a zero very easily and a hundred very easily. Maximum number of sentences will be in mathematics. And these days maximum number of zeros are also in mathematics. So we love binary, we love numbers. So mathematics will is a subject where if you are well versed with things, they cannot cut marks at all. There is absolutely no subjectivity in mathematics. However, these days they have added this value based question which brings in a little bit of subjectivity to math. But apart from that, math is not at all subjective. We are very, very objective. You get the answer right, I have to give you marks. There's no way I can cut your marks. You've written all the steps, there's no way I can cut marks. So if you know all the concepts very well, there is no way that anyone 
can take that one mark also out of your kitty. So math is the easiest subject to score 100. It's also the easiest subject to score a zero because there's no way that I can give you grace marks if your steps are absolutely wrong. If you write absurd things, your teacher cannot give you even a single mark. If you're trying to pass in the examination, I wouldn't recommend you to go through partial fractions because yes, as you said, partial fractions is difficult. And I haven't seen a question from partial fraction coming every year in the examination. It does come once in two years, three years or once in four years. It's not very frequent. Intermittently, people do ask questions from partial fractions. But again, partial fractions as a concept is pretty difficult. And unfortunately, in CBSE, partial fractions is not taught in algebra. It is taught directly in the chapter on integration. So partial fractions is also inter introduced in the chapter on integration and then you're asked to integrate using partial fractions so it might become a little little complicated for you to go through partial fractions and then integrate using partial fractions if you do not want 100 marks then you might as well skip this topic and it's not the time to start learning pra partial fractions now because today is the 21st of february and on the 21st of march you have your math examination and before that you have physics chemistry and english and probably some other elective of yours so it's definitely not the time to start learning anything new and this is not just for math for any particular subject i would say this is not the time to start learning new things this is the time to complete your revisions close all your revision notebooks start solving sample papers because solving sample papers will give you an idea as to what are the sort of questions that come frequently in the examinations now you can find lots and lots of sample papers online in our Baiju's app which you can download from this particular description of the video here also contains lots and lots of sample papers lots and lots of sample questions so you can solve as many number of problems as you want from our app subscribe to our app and you can improve your process of revising also it's important that you have an idea about each of the concept that is there in the book so it's it's worthwhile to make a summary sheet of all the concepts which is also available on our app very soon it will be coming you'll get you'll be getting summary of all the concepts that we cover in the in the in the in the subject of mathematics so i think i am done with 20 minutes and we will stop now it's time to wrap up yet another facebook live session i will be coming back on saturday explaining to you the next few chapters the insight on how can you prepare better from these chapters any more questions that you have in fact i've got a few more questions but i don't have the time to answer them i think i've covered all almost everything that i want to tell you today in this session so i'm going to close it here so any more questions that you have you can write it here we will try and answer all your questions you can write to us at byju's our team here will answer you with specific problems also if you want answers to some specific problems as well all the best for your preparations do not take a lot of tension this is the time when a lot of pressure will be put on all of you but please do not get stressed it's time when you need to give your body enough nourishment as well as enough rest in addition to preparing well because if you're not healthy enough you will not be able to prepare well and you'll not be able to do well on the day of the examination so take great care of yourself and prepare well and make sure that you pass the examination with flying colors